Number five on this list is the Leap Castle. The Leap Castle is located in Ireland and it's just a setting for a movie waiting to happen. CN Traveler says, built somewhere between the 13th and late 15th century, this Irish castle has seen more gruesome deaths than a Game of Thrones wedding. As legend has it, during a struggle for power within the O'Carroll clan, which had a fondness for poisoning dinner guests, by the way, one brother plunged a sword into another, a priest, as he was holding mass in the castle's chapel. The room is now called the Bloody Chapel, and the priest is said to haunt the church at night. And the horror doesn't end there. During castle renovations in the early 1900s, workmen found a secret dungeon in the Bloody Chapel with so many human skeletons, they filled three cartloads when they hauled away. The dungeon was designed so that prisoners would fall through a trap door, have their lungs punctured by wooded spikes on the ground, and die a slow, horrific death within earshot of the sinister clan members above. Man, people really were nuts back then. Like, think about the dude who designed that kill chamber. Putting down all the spikes, arranging them in such a fashion that they wouldn't kill somebody right away, but give them just enough time to feel the sheer agony of it all and hear a bunch of their enemies having dinner above them. Obviously, because of all of this, this castle is right up there as being one of the most haunted in the world. The ghosts of those who died in this chamber are said to haunt those who stop by. Their spirits are filled with rage and anger and they want to take it out on all the people who come here. Like, this sucks because it would be kind of interesting to tour this castle, but at the same point, I don't know if I even blame these guys. Like if I had to die like that, then I feel as if I'd be a pretty bitter ghost about things as well. Number four on this list is the Huska Castle. This is right up there as being a castle to hell, if you ask me. CN Traveler says, located about an hour north of Prague, Huska Castle has no fortifications, no kitchen, and had no occupants when it was built. It does, however, have something within its walls that no other castle in the world has, a large hole in the ground that many consider to be the gateway to hell. Huska was strategically built over the hole, which is fabled to be bottomless to seal up the gateway and keep demonic creatures from entering our world. The demons are said to be trapped in the walls of the lower level. Here's where the story gets really creepy though. Before sealing it off, nearby prisoners were granted pardons if they would agree to be lowered into the hole by a rope and report back what they saw. When the first prisoner was lowered, he started screaming after a few seconds. When he was raised back up, the story goes, he appeared to have aged 30 years. So there is literally a gateway to hell here in this castle. That is so freaking cool and at the same point, so freaking scary. Think about how many demons and ghouls must be running around this place all the time. The devil, for all we know, might claim this castle as his own and show up here regularly. And then there's the whole story with the prisoner. How in the hell did that happen? He gets lowered down and then seconds later raised back up only to be 30 years older. I wonder if this indicates to us that time moves a lot faster in hell. Or maybe he lived 30 entire years in hell in the short time that it took us to reel him back up. Can you imagine 30 years in hell just dangling by a rope? That would be, well, that would be hell. In third place, we have the Vorgard Castle in Denmark. So in the northeastern Danish town of Dronningland, Vorgard Castle is renowned for its dark past. The most famous tale tells the story of Ingeborg Skeel, who acquired the castle in 1578 and drowned its architect in the moat so that he could never design another building as beautiful as this one. Well then, that uh, takes gatekeeping to a whole new level. Skeel was an enterprising and highly skilled businesswoman and therefore despised by a large percentage of the local population. Ah yes, a woman in power scaring people. I'd love to say I'm shocked, but not really. If anything, I'm just impressed. The stories about her evil misdoings are many, and after her death in 1604, she haunted the castle to such an extent that a priest was called in to perform an exorcism and lay her spirit to rest in a nearby marsh. People today report seeing Skeel's cranky ghost wandering through the castle at night dressed in white. Oh, don't worry, there's more. In the northeastern tower room, there is a stain on the floor, which originates from someone having been killed in that spot. The residue of an innocent life source that has been shed and cannot be removed. The stain was all but forgotten for many years, but when the room was renovated in 1997, the year I was born. 
The stain reappeared as many years varnish was sanded off. And uh, no matter how much the floor is sanded, the stain always reappears after a few days. Also, in a display case at the castle lies the skin of a wild boar brought down in the castle grounds during the 18th century. As the wild boar was brought down on the border between Vorgard and Hunsland, a minor feud arose, resulting in a sharing of the spoils. And since uh, this castle got the skin, you can guess how that was split. According to legend, the wild boar skin must never be removed from the grounds, or the entire castle will come crashing down to the ground. Alrighty, so keep all the uh, minimalist interior designers away from the castle, and anyone who wants to burn animal furs. It's not worth things such a great haunted home for. Oh, and you know, I guess history and architecture as well. But you gotta keep the ghosties happy. In second place, we have Pajama Castle in Slovenia. So built within a cave in the middle of a towering cliff, this castle, which dates back to 1272, is imposing by most visible standards. Once the residence of Knight Erizam Luger, Pajama has hidden passageways and was reputedly a site of vicious punishment and treachery. Now, Luger was betrayed by his servants and killed in the castle, and is said to haunt it still today. Now, because the castle was built to defend itself, it had some uh, other surprises as well. It has holes in the ceiling of the entrance tower for pouring down boiling oil onto intruders and a very dark dungeon. There is a space in between the walls of the dungeon made to um, brick people in the wall, and bones have since been found inside the thick wall. Oh, crips, I should really backtrack. Um, if you were an enemy and captured, you were brought to court, which overlooked the small punishment chamber. In the courtroom, there's a door leading to a lovely 63 meter vertical cave drop, so either you were, you know, physically punished or executed on the spot, nothing in between. On the bottom of this shaft, the bones of the unfortunate souls still rest and have never been recovered. Some say the captured souls of the people who got locked in during the 1511 earthquake also still try to get out. Well, it's, you know, business as usual during the day, even employees of the museum make sure to exit before sundown. So. You're telling me that I could uh, easily plan a slumber party there without worrying about security? Road trip! In first place, we have Leap Castle in Ireland. So built somewhere between the 13th and late 15th century, this Irish castle has apparently seen more gruesome deaths than a Game of Thrones wedding. Alrighty, so uh, let's unpack that. As legend has it, during a struggle for power within the O'Carroll clan, who had a fondness for poisoning dinner guests, one brother plunged a sword into another, a priest, as he was holding mass in the castle's chapel. The room is now called the B-L-O-O-D-Y Chapel, and the priest is said to haunt the church at night. In addition, during castle renovations in the early 1900s, workmen found a secret dungeon in the chapel with so many human skeletons that they felt three cartloads when they hauled them away. The dungeon in question was designed so that prisoners would fall through a trapdoor, have their lungs punctured by wooded spikes on the ground, and die a slow, horrific death with an earshot of the sinister clan members above. I don't know if I should publicly congratulate how brilliant this is, but while no one should try and recreate this horror, you've got to give credit where credit is due for some really smart design plans. Numerous people were imprisoned and executed in the castle and it is said that uh, that's one of the reasons why the castle's haunted. One of the most terrifying beings which reside in the castle has simply been called It. No, no, not Pennywise. It is a small creature about the size of a sheep and has a decaying face and is believed that uh, when It appears, It is accompanied by the smell of sulfur and the smell of a decaying corpse. Uh, yeah, nucky, yucky. Yeah, uh, no thank you, moving on. There are also the elementals, which are believed to occur mainly in the countryside, where they have attached themselves to a particular place. When the castle's ownership was transferred to the Darbys, Mildred Darby dabbled in the occult as it was you know, the fashion during the day, and it's widely believed that this practice resulted in the awakening of the elemental. She even wrote about her frightening ordeal back in 1909. She was standing in the gallery when she felt someone put a hand on her shoulder, and when she looked, she saw a thing about the size of sheep with a gaunt inhuman face, black cavities for the eyes, and it had the smell of a decomposing corpse. Once again with the icky smells. Hard pass. Shadows are also seen wandering the priest's house, which has been an empty shell since burning in uh, 1922. A burly man has been seen pushing a heavy barrel up the stairs. The barrel rolls down, and then the man and the barrel disappear. The red lady has been encountered by many people as well, and you know, heck yes, a mystery lady. The story goes that the red lady is the ghost of a woman captured and sexually taken advantage of by the O'Carrolls, which resulted in pregnancy. The O'Carrolls killed the result of that, and in despair, uh, this lady killed herself. The red lady has been seen carrying a dagger in her hand and raising it menacingly, as if you you know, wanting to uh, stab someone. And hey, sounds valid to me. Two young ladies have been seen and heard playing in Leap Castle, and they go by the names of Emily and Charlotte. Now, Emily died at the age of when she fell from the battlements, and uh, many people have seen her ghost falling from the castle and disappearing before hitting the ground. Well, I hope they're at least having fun together. I'm forgetting one last thing. Cripes. What is it? Oh, right. There is also the 
M-U-R-D-E-R -E hole room called the muckle hole room. Look, the internet doesn't like that M word, but like I couldn't just sidestep it, so I hope y'all can um, spell. There's a red stain on the floor of that room, and it is said to be that of the man who was impaled to death by his brother during a quarrel for ownership of the castle. Yeah, that's an extreme case of sibling rivalry right there. In fifth place, we have Brand Castle in Romania. Ah, yes. My crush on vampires and heavy bias is coming out to play. Can you blame me? I dress like this. <laughs> I know I've mentioned it before, but my big brother is literally like a vampire king. Long story, but it's true. And that sort of stuff just imprints on a girl. And if Bran Castle doesn't ring any bells, try this on for size. Dracula's Castle. Yeah, I totally have the biggest crush on the Dracula Universal Studios. Respectively speaking, of course. Uh, cripes. Where was I? Right. Bran Castle is linked to the historical character who inspired author Bram Stoker, that being Vlad the Third Dracula, otherwise known as Vlad the Impaler. He is often considered one of the most important rulers in Wallachian history and a national hero of Romania. Now, while he wasn't fond of draining life force like the legend he went on to inspire, his preference for impaling his enemies on stakes in the ground and leaving them to die earned him the name Vlad the Impaler. He inflicted this type of punishment on all enemies, but notably, as he retreated from a battle in 1462, he left a field filled with thousands of impaled victims as a deterrent to pursuing Ottoman forces. Now, some believe Bran Castle was one of the sites in which Vlad reigned terror on Transylvania. Nowadays, it serves as a museum, and other musty, spooky sites within its walls include a golden casket that holds the heart of Romania's Queen Marie. In fourth place, we have Chillingham Castle in England. So, built as Britain's most haunted castle, Chillingham Castle has a horrific history of prisoner-ridden dungeons and well-used, um, punishment chambers. Look, the interweb doesn't like me using the T word when talking about people, but punishment is the next best way to describe it. Its roll call of resident ghosties include the whimpering blue boy, the pantry's white lady, and the perpetually lonesome Lady Mary Berkeley. Now, obviously I'm gonna talk in detail about the spirits. Y'all know how much I love a good mystery lady, so I'll start with her. Why leave the best for last when I can choose instant gratification? In what is called the Inner Pantry, a frail figure in white is known to appear. So the silver was stored there once upon a time, and a footman was employed to sleep there and guard it. Which, you know, sounds like a pretty easy job for the most part. Historically, one night, when the footman had turned in to sleep, he was accosted by this lady in white, and she was very pale, and she begged him for water. And originally he thought it was one of the castle guests, so he turned to obey, before he remembered that he was, you know, locked in and no visitor could possibly have entered. When he turned back to confront her, he found she had vanished. Now the same pale figure is seen to this day, and it is thought the longing for water suggests poisoning. Heck of a way to go, but uh, let's move on to the blue boy, shall we? Also known as the Radium Boy, he's a phantom known to haunt the pink bedroom, my favorite color. His pitiful cries can be heard at the stroke of midnight, and he appears as an orb or a halo of blue light, often close to a passage leading to a tower. The glowing figure occasionally manifests itself as a little boy dressed in blue, ergo how the moniker came to be. This apparition has been linked to the bones of a little one found walled up in the castle, which were found during renovation work in the early 20th century. Remnants of moldering blue fabric were discovered uh, along with the skeleton. Poor fellow. I hope he gets the chance to cross over someday. Well, we can't forget to mention the tragic Lady Mary Berkeley, who passed in 1719. She was the wife of Lord Grey of Wark in Chillingham, who abandoned her to run off with her sister, Henrietta, causing um, quite the scandal. The heartbroken Lady Mary was left with her newborn, wandering the halls of the castle, longing for the return of her errant husband. He never returned, and uh, she apparently never left. Visitors to the castle have reported the rustle of silk, accompanied by an unearthly chill, which has been interpreted as indication Lady Mary has passed by on her sad vigil. She is said to be buried just beyond the castle in the tiny medieval church of St. Peter's in the village of Chillingham. Less notable interactions take place in the chapel, beside the great hall, where the voices of two men are often heard talking. It is never possible to follow their words, and they stop talking if one makes serious efforts to trace them. So, um... Who wants to spend a night there? Fine, I'll call up my close friends and beg them. Number three in this list is the Vorgard Castle. This place has seen things, guys. CN Traveler says, in the northeastern Danish town of Dronningland, Vorgard Castle displays works by Raphael, Goya, and El Greco to the public. But the stately building is also as renowned for its dark past. The most famous myth tells the story of Ingerbord Skeel, who acquired the castle in 1578 and drowned its architect in the moat so that he could never design another building as beautiful as Vorgard. People today report seeing Skeel's tormented ghost wandering through the castle at night dressed in white. Even if you don't believe in ghost stories, you might still get goosebumps passing by Rosdenton, Vorgard's most infamous dungeon. The room was designed so that an adult man can neither stand up straight nor lie stretched out, and there are no holes for light or air either. Ingeborg Skeel. What a freaking name, eh? 
Kind of sounds a bit like a robot, but I guess that was a human being back in the day. Also, let's take a moment and actively think about that dungeon there. So you can't stand up, but you also can't lie down, and there are no holes for light or air. Think about how horrible it would be to go in there. It'd just be a tiny little box. Like, getting put inside that thing would be the torture. You wouldn't need to do anything else to the person. This place's dark history has made it one of the most haunted spots in Denmark. Which is really too bad, because as CN Traveler described, the castle itself is remarkably beautiful. Number two on this list is Casa Loma. Now, I had to talk about this one because it's actually located in Toronto, Canada, and I have personally been to this castle before myself. CN Traveler says there is a gothic revival style castle in Midtown Toronto that, whether you realize it or not, you almost certainly have seen. On screen, that is. Casa Loma has made appearances in Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, X-Men, Disney's live-action Beauty and the Beast, and as Hogwarts in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. This is partly because of the mansion's distinct architectural qualities, but also because of its legend. There are decades worth of reported ghost sightings, including the spirit of Sir Henry Pallet, its original inhabitant, and his wife Lady Mary, for whom the castle was built. Even more frequently seen is the apparition of a maid from the early 1900s, when 60,000 people in Toronto died of the flu. Now, I personally cannot attest to the ghostly sightings. I only went there once, and I went right in the middle of the day when there were tons of other people around, so didn't really get a chance to see anything too spooky. What I can speak on, though, is the tunnels. There are a ton of deep and long winding tunnels in this castle. They are all creepy as holy hell, and I imagine that they've seen their fair share of death. I can't actively tell you not to go to this place, considering I personally have been myself, but I will say to tread with caution. And finally, number one on this list is the Bangar Fort. Located in India, this ancient fort has a curse that hangs over it. Deep in the state of Rajasthan, at the foot of the Aravali mountain range, lies an abandoned 17th century ruined fort city. One piece of local lore says a sadhu who lived atop the nearest hill permitted the fort to be built under the condition that it not cast a shadow on his own home. Once his mandate was disobeyed, he cursed the city. Considered the most haunted place in India, entry to the popular tourist destination is strictly forbidden after sunset. Nearby villagers whisper of paranormal activity, but skeptics say the After Dark Band's true intent is to protect people from the dwellers of an ancient tiger reserve. The gloomy aura and negative vibrations of Bangar Fort, however, are agreed upon by believers and non-believers alike. I don't know if I buy into the whole protection from tigers thing. Everything that I've read about this place and the personal accounts that people have reported seem to indicate that something evil and paranormal is definitely afoot. It seems that somebody really likes the sun, and having anything get in the way of that causes them a big problem. So much so that they curse the place and the whole freaking city. Demon-like creatures have occasionally been reported. They're said to be a cross between a werewolf and a slug-like creature. Really weird looking, apparently. Locals are always on the lookout for them and tell their kids never to wander off too far to the fort for fear that they may never return. <laughs> 